Welcome to Structures and Forces, a unit of Science 7. Structures are things that have a definite size and shape and serve a purpose or a function. Things like a desk is a structure, a pencil is a structure, uh, even a school is a structure. To perform its function, every part of the structure has to resist forces. Forces are things that push or pull on a structure. These forces can change a structure's shape or size. The structure also has to be able to support a load. A load is defined as the weight carried or supported by a structure. There are a couple of different kinds of structures. The first are natural structures or structures not made by people. An example of natural structures are things like feathers or sand dunes or snow banks or mountains. A second type of structure is manufactured structures, structures that have been built by people. So it could be high tech structures like the Eiffel Tower or it could be low tech structures. Examples include buildings, jigsaw puzzles, umbrellas, jewelry. We classify structures based on their design. Design means how a structure is put together and how it is shaped, as well as what materials are used in the structure. There are two types of structures that we will be talking about. The first is a mass structure. A mass structure can simply be made by piling things up or by fo forming similar materials into a particular shape or design. So a mass structure is generally made of one type of thing. So there are natural mass structures and these include things like mountains which are made of rocks or sand dunes which are made of sand. Manufactured mass structures or things that we make include bread. Bread is a pile of um, everything you mix together to make a loaf of bread. An igloo is a mass structure made of snow. The second type of structure that we're going to be talking about for Science 7 are frame structures. Frame structures have a skeleton of very strong materials. The skeleton supports the weight of the roof and of the covering material. Some frame structures are simple and only have a frame, and these include things like ladders and spider webs. Other types of frame structures are more complicated and have added parts, such as other simple machines like gears. These include things like bicycles and umbrellas. Here are a couple of examples of frame structures. In underneath the metal of the car are or the metal a shell of the car are things like struts and a frame that supports the metal. The Golden Gate Bridge is a frame structure. You can see that um, you can see the frame here where it supports the bridge deck. Here's another part of the frame. Another frame structure is the Opera Hall in Sydney, Australia and the frame supports the roof. I said we were only going to talk about two, but we're going to talk about a third as well, and these are shell structures. Shell structures are objects that use a thin and carefully shaped outer layer of material to provide strength and rigidity. What are some examples of a shell structure? So you could say that a box is a shell structure because it uses a thin layer of cardboard. You can say an egg is a shell structure because it has that, um, the egg shell. And if you hollow out the inside of the snow, you create a thin shell of snow to create an igloo. Can you include more than one type of structure in a building? Absolutely. The Taj Mahal in India is part a frame structure because of the dome and part of it is a frame structure. You can see that in the um, 
you can see that in the arches that are here in the building. A football helmet is a shell structure with the helmet part, the plastic helmet, and the frame structure guarding the player's face. A plane consists of a shell structure, so that's the outer skin of the airplane, as well as a frame that holds the shell in place. The next thing we're going to talk about is called variation in design. How does the variation in the design of the structures affect how well it functions? How would these roof structures function differently? So we have the Sydney Opera House, we have a tent, and we have a house, um, a regular looking house. With the Sydney Opera House, it's designed so that the music will travel nicely within the structure of the building. So these arches that you see here are all designed to um, enhance the musical experience. This sort of tent in what looks to be Africa has um, is designed to keep the heat off these people, right? So they've designed it so that air can flow through and the, the sun will stay off so that they stay cool and there's some shade. This regular house here is designed for all seasons to keep the snow out in the winter, to keep the rain out in the summer. So you can see how the function of the structure affects how people design it. The design of structures are also affected by where they're built in the world and when they were built. For instance, these kind of structures are found in the desert where you have a lot of mud that's available to produce, um, you have a lot of this clay that's available to produce uh, these red houses. Um, they make it out of clay because it absorbs heat and it keeps cool. Um, at the time when the Aboriginal people of Canada were living in teepees on the plains, um, what they had available for them to build their dwellings out of was animal skins. And because they were nomadic, they needed to be able to move around. So they chose a design, a shell and frame design, um, that they could easily transport from place to place. Uh, this house that is found in Africa, again, is designed like these houses here, where it's out of this red mud or clay, um, and they're using a design, or they're using natural materials for the the roof. These people are using the materials that are available in their environment. Again, this house is a product of modern manufacturing and um, we have different materials available to us in Canada. The Inuit up north traditionally used what was available to them during the winter to create dwellings and this, and this was snow. What do you need to consider when you're building a structure? You need to consider the function. So what job do you want the structure to do? For example, a train bridge is designed to support the weight of a train. So if it couldn't support the weight of a train, then you would have a pretty crappy bridge. People also look at aesthetics. So how good it looks, how pretty it is. When people are designing something, they look at not only the function, but how good it looks or how pretty the building is. The best designs not only serve their purpose, but they are also aesthetically pleasing, meaning that they look good. Aesthetics is the study of beauty in art and nature. They also have to consider safety. So if a building looks good, but isn't safe to be in, it's not a very good structure, right? Almost all structures are built with a large margin of safety. This means that they're designed to withstand forces much greater than they're normally put under. For instance, a bridge is designed to hold much more weight than it would ever have to hold. So they're trying to build safety in. 
People also, because things cost money to build, they also have to balance cost with safety. It's difficult to design a safe uh, structure that is also not too expensive. So people who build structures are always balancing cost with safety. People also have to consider the materials that they're going to use. The properties of the material must match the purpose of the structure. So if you were to think about building a car, a bridge for cars, you wouldn't want to make it out of rubber, right? Because you want something rigid and hard, not bendy and elastic. So to review, when we are looking at structures, we have to look at its function or the job that it's going to do. We have to look at aesthetics or how pleasing it is to the eye, how good it looks, how safe it is. Is it going to be something that's going to be safe to um, use? As well as we have to balance cost with safety and consider the materials that we're going to use very carefully.